Today on the AI Breakdown, we're talking about how AI sneakily made its way into yesterday's iPhone and Apple Watch presentation. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Yesterday was the big Apple iPhone 15 unveiling, and we also got a new Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Series 9. And of course, if I'm talking about it on this show, you know that I am exploring the artificial intelligence dimension of it. Well, to get a sense for how to think about if and where AI made it into the presentation, I think the title of this Reuters piece about the event does a pretty good job of summing it up. The piece is titled, AI Quietly Reshapes Apple iPhones and Watches, and so that's what we're going to be exploring today. Now, to kick things off, let's talk about how our understanding of Apple's approach to AI has changed over the last few months. How and when exactly Apple was going to jump into the AI race has been one of the big questions in the big tech sphere throughout 2023. In July, we got a little bit more of a peek of what was going on behind the scenes, with Bloomberg reporting that Apple was testing something they were calling Apple GPT, as well as working on their own generative AI tools and LLMs. The piece reads, Apple Inc. is quietly working on artificial intelligence tools that could challenge those of OpenAI, Google, and others, but the company has yet to devise a clear strategy for releasing the technology to consumers. So the framework that Apple was working on was called Ajax, and the chatbot that they were using internally they were calling Apple GPT. According to the Bloomberg article, the push inside Apple for AI had grown in importance in recent months. And what's more, that executives were getting more worried about figuring out Apple's slant on the whole shift. Again, from the Bloomberg piece, behind the scenes, Apple has grown concerned about missing a potentially paramount shift in how devices operate. Generative AI promises to transform how people interact with phones, computers, and other technology. And Apple's devices, which produced revenue of nearly $320 billion in the last fiscal year, could suffer if the company doesn't keep up with AI advances. That's why they continue. Apple began laying the foundation for AI services with the Ajax framework, as well as a ChatGPT-like tool for use internally. However, also according to the piece, Apple GPT doesn't really have any features that any of the other publicly available tools like it don't have, nor any really novel technology. Indeed, they write, Apple is still trying to determine the consumer angle for generative AI. While the company doesn't yet have a concrete plan, people familiar with the work believe Apple is aiming to make a significant AI-related announcement next year. All in all, the piece basically presented a picture of a company that knows that it needs to do something, but that isn't exactly sure what it should be doing. Now, this was kind of reinforced by another report from the information a couple weeks ago. That piece was called Apple Boost Spending to Develop Conversational AI. And the big new piece of news was that Apple was now spending several million dollars per day training their internal models. And on the one hand, even though they were spending more money, the information piece still made it seem like there were big questions internally at Apple about exactly what the Apple slant on AI would be. From the information, questions linger over how Apple can incorporate LLMs in its products. The company's leaders prefer running software on devices, which improves privacy and performance, as opposed to on cloud servers, but that could be difficult to achieve. Ajax GPT, for example, has been trained on more than 200 billion parameters, and an LLM with more than 200 billion parameters couldn't reasonably fit on an iPhone. So basically, what you have here is a demonstration of how Apple's core operating philosophies, which are privacy-centric, which focus on on-device versus cloud models, are running up against the particulars of the generative AI space. At the same time, the piece did give some hints about how Apple might start to bring AI into its product line. From the very beginning of the article, one of Apple's goals is to develop features such as one that allows iPhone customers to use simple voice commands to automate tasks involving multiple steps. The technology, for instance, could allow someone to tell the Siri voice assistant on their phone to create a GIF using the last five photos they've taken and text it to a friend. Today, an iPhone user has to manually program the individual actions. So the update, effectively, from that July Bloomberg report was, one, a seeming increase in resource expenditure, two, a continuation of the big questions about how to Appleify AI, and three, a sense that at least the initial steps might be focused on improving core experiences on key Apple products like the iPhone. There were some who thought that the announcements from the Worldwide Developer Conference in June also pointed in that direction. A piece in The Atlantic called Apple is an AI company now argued that, quote, lots of tiny AI tweaks are quietly taking over the iPhone. And basically, this pointed out that a number of these small feature updates that had been announced, such as a new generation of autocorrect, the Photos app being able to recognize and differentiate between the owner's dogs and other dogs, and AirPods getting smarter about adjusting background noise, all were ultimately AI-powered features, even though that wasn't a term that was used to describe them. Indeed, at the Worldwide Developer Conference, the term artificial intelligence was used a grand total of zero times. 
And so that brings us back to yesterday's iPhone and watch announcement and the Reuters piece called AI quietly reshapes Apple iPhones and watches. The piece reads, Without using the words artificial intelligence to describe the emerging technology, Apple showcased a new line of phones and a new watch that included improved semiconductor designs that power the new AI features. The features largely improve basic functions like taking a call or snapping better images. So the big thing that people were focused in on was this new A17 Pro chip and what Apple calls the neural engine that powers it. Attila writes, 35 teraflops of ML compute in your pocket. On-device inference is getting interesting. Mac Rumors writes, with the new neural engine, S9 series requests are processed on device to make them more secure and quicker. Danny Acosta writes, Apple just doubled the AI capabilities in the new iPhone 15. 2x faster neural engine. Performs nearly 35 trillion operations per second with 16 cores. They can train a whole ML model in your iPhone that learns about you without even going to the cloud. Okay, so what we have here is quite clearly a hardware update that makes it appear as though Apple isn't quite ready to give up on its foundational principles just because AI is hot. What I mean by that is that if the problem with on-device models is that they're too big for those devices as they stand, well then maybe what Apple needs to do is just power up what those devices can do. Let's read Danny Acosta's tweet again with that in mind. Apple just doubled the AI capabilities in the new iPhone 15. 2x faster neural engine performs nearly 35 trillion operations per second with 16 cores. They can train a whole ML model in your iPhone that learns about you without even going to the cloud. In other words, part of why it seems like Apple may not be going head first into AI, at least in terms of the marketing of AI, is that it's still building out the technological capabilities to do AI the way that it wants to. On device, private, trained in relation to the specific user. But that doesn't mean that the new chip won't come with new features available right away. As Ars Technica writes, the neural engine offers big boost to on-device processing for Siri requests, including 25% faster voice dictation. The other thing that the neural engine enables is a new gesture that once again, as Ars Technica puts it, Apple claims watch users will be using every day. So what is that gesture? It's something that Apple is calling double tap and involves a user tapping their index finger and their thumb of their watch hand together twice. In other words, without having to touch the Apple Watch's display. This will allow users to perform basic tasks such as answering a call. Apple writes, The new double tap gesture is enabled by the faster neural engine in Apple Watch Series 9, which processes data from the accelerometer, gyroscope, and optical heart sensor with the new machine learning algorithm. The algorithm detects the unique signature of tiny wrist movements and changes in blood flow when the index finger and thumb perform a double tap. So basically, the watch understands how your wrist changes when you do that double tap, and that's a feature that's now available because of the faster neural engine. Now, some users were underwhelmed by this. CNET writes, In my brief time using the Series 9, I used double tap to scroll through widgets, answer a phone call, start a timer, and toggle the flashlight. It worked accurately most of the time, but there were times when I had to perform the gesture more than once to get the watch to respond. Haptic feedback and a tiny symbol at the top of the screen let you know that double tap is working. It may not be a game changer, but double tap could be useful for dismissing alarms and answering calls when my hands are full. Now, this is a completely reasonable review from an observer trying to be objective and thinking like a general consumer would. But for our purposes, it's hard not to see it as the beginning of a break in how we interact with AI-powered devices made possible by more advanced machine learning and more advanced chips for actually doing the inference on device at a speed which works for real life. As we talked about in the brief today, one of the big themes of AI at the moment is the sort of privatization and personalization that is a necessary part of the development of the field as people understand and value that the most useful AI models are the ones that know the most about them or their businesses, but that that involves a lot of risk in the form of giving access to personal data. While it may not be ready for prime time yet, the fact that Apple is racing to build devices that are actually prepared to handle the workload of truly private, personalized AI-powered features is something that could be pretty game-changing. For now, the value may be faster Siri and a better ability to hold pumpkin spice lattes while using your watch to interact, but in the future, the implications are obviously a lot bigger. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments or come join us on the AI Breakers Discord. The discussion happens at bit.ly slash AI Breakdown. Thanks as always for listening or watching. And until next time, peace.